Hello, everyone. Uh, this is just the series that I decided to randomly do out of the blue because I felt like it. I kind of wanted to talk about the Flashpoint Secure Player, how I created it, and uh, some of the, the challenges that I that I overcame in, in creating it, because I figured that some people might find that interesting. Um, this is not scripted. I have a rough outline of the points I want to cover, but I'm kind of just talking. And obviously this is not a substitute for the actual documentation. I have a readme uh, that's actually very extensive for this that describes how to use this uh, if you if you just want to use it. But I figure that, you know, uh, for the future, if somebody ever wants to change something, uh, maybe, and I've been trying to, like, comment this up to make it easier to understand what this does, but uh, I don't think there's quite any substitute for just being able to ask the creator directly, you know, what was I thinking when I did a particular thing. And so uh, I decided, you know, I'm just going to make, like, a little video series out of, um, you know, how I put this uh, thing together. Uh, and, and I'm kind of going in on the assumption that you already know what the Flashpoint Secure Player is, or at least what Flashpoint is. Um, otherwise, this is probably not very useful to you. Um, but to kind of uh, summarize that, just give a quick overview, Flashpoint Secure Player is sort of a Flashpoint Swiss Army knife. Uh, it does all the things that the Flashpoint tech guys uh, wanted to be able to do uh, in a standardized fashion. Um, and so... <clears throat> One of the main problems that I wanted to solve with this uh, was the ActiveX problem, because Flashpoint has games that use uh, like Internet Explorer ActiveX controls, uh, and those need to be registered. So, so the way that this was originally done is that you'd start the game, the ActiveX control would be registered, and then um, we would just open like uh, a random Internet Explorer uh, base browser that we found. And then you'd play the game, you'd close it, and then nothing would happen. We couldn't unregister the control because it wasn't safe, because we had no idea if you had it installed before, because ActiveX doesn't provide any sort of method if you just have the DLL of checking if it was installed before. Uh, and so um, you, you it, we would leave the ActiveX control on the system, and I thought this was this was bad, and that I didn't uh, want that to happen. And so, Flashpoint Secure Player it arose out of this desire to to make it so that you know if the ActiveX control is already installed, then it will stay installed. But if it isn't, then it'll be removed after you're done playing the game. And that's why it's called Flashpoint Secure Player um, because. Uh, it was because it wouldn't leave these potentially potentially insecure ActiveX controls on your system. Um, <clears throat> and part of the uh, part of that was just creating a, a web browser interface. So from the very beginning, I I envisioned this having a sort of basic just Internet Explorer frame that would replace. Um, the world browser that we were using before. Um, and so that's um, what I'm going to show off first. Uh, I'm going to, I'm not going to go in order of like, you know, what code happens when. I'm kind of going to go in order of like basic complexity to, to the more complex stuff. And I figure because of that, the, the web browser is a good place to start. Um, I've also, I've made my um, text in Visual Studio a little bit larger than usual, um, so that hopefully you can um, it, it's comfortable a comfortable size to read. Um, if it isn't, you know, try try making the video full screen so that you can read it a little bit easier. Uh, or you know, I I could make it larger, but uh, obviously not right now because I don't have the feedback if this is large enough or not. But I'm hoping that it is. Um, so anyway. <coughs> But before I even get into this uh, web browser class, and I should mention off the bat here, I, I keep going off on tangents, but uh, like I said, this isn't scripted. Uh, this file is, is quite large. I, I don't... When it comes to the organization of this, it's fairly organized. Like, you can see over here on the right, I have 
files. Like, I have this organized into files. It's not one monolithic file, but um, I like... I, I don't like switching files too often, and so I like them to be, you know, decently sized. So um, it is organized, but also I do have, uh, like, a lot of stuff going on in one file, just because that's how I operate efficiently. Uh, I understand, you know, that if there were multiple people working on this, maybe I would put more effort into organizing it into smaller files, but uh, because that's just kind of, like, the standard, but... Um, for me personally, this is just how my brain operates, uh, and so because I'm really the only one who touches this usually, uh, I decided to do it this way. Um, but maybe someday, you know, it can be a little bit more uh, sorted into files. But just uh, just explaining, you know, this is a bit of a large file. Um, but before I even like get into how the web browser itself works, we should probably look at how it's instantiated. So if we go to sort of the main file of this um, application, uh, you can see here, this is where the web browser is created. And again, I'm not going to bother explaining um, what the code that happens before this point, um, because I'm not really going in order. I'm just going to go in order of what I feel like talking about today. So. <laughs> um, so this is where the web browser is created, and right off the bat you can see something kind of interesting happening here, uh, which is that I take the URL, this is the URL that's passed in over the command line, like this URL variable is um, passed in uh, the launch command from the, from the launcher. Uh, and I'm not just passing it directly into the URI object um, like you normally would, I'm actually passing it into this function first called get validated URL. And the reason for this is because of something that I didn't even really consider the first time uh, when, when I when I first made this, uh, wrote this code. <coughs> the When we were transitioning uh, from the browser that we were using before for some plugins to Flashpoint Secure Player, this issue arose, uh, which is that not everybody, when you go to type a URL into the address bar in like a browser, uh, you usually don't write like the HTTP colon slash slash and then the URL, right? You usually just write like flashpointarchive.org, right? And then the browser takes that and it uh, prepends the um, protocol in front of that. And what I didn't realize is that when you specify a URL on the command line, it actually does the same thing. It uses the same rule. So it's as if you typed it into the address bar. So the issue is that some games that were curated um, didn't have the HTTP colon slash slash in front. They would just do like www.flashpointarchive.org slash whatever. Uh, and technically, that's not a valid URL. So the URI object considers that invalid, and that would cause it to throw an exception. Um, and so those games that were doing that didn't work. And this is actually, um, you would think, you know, okay, so just check if the protocol is in front, and if it isn't, just slap it in front, right? Um, but it's actually more complicated than that, right? Because you can't use the URI object to do that, right? Normally what you would want to do is you want to um, pass the URL into the URI object, and then you would want to, you know, get the protocol. So you do like web browser URL dot, uh, I think it's scheme. Yeah, web browser URL dot scheme, this would give you the protocol. And you would think, you know, okay, so just check if this is empty, and if it's empty, there's no protocol. But the issue is that I can't do that. Right? Because you can't even create the URI object if the URL is invalid, and URLs with no protocol are invalid. So I'll show you sort of my, my first draft of, of how I did this. So I'll just, I'll just comment this out temporarily. Um, so sort of my first draft of what I did is I had a try catch. And in this try-catch, I had basically this, except I didn't call 
this get validated URL function that just passed the URL directly in because uh, I didn't have this function yet, right? So I just passed this direct directly in, and then if this failed um, to to parse the URL, presumably because it didn't have the protocol in front, then I would just try the same thing again, but toss the protocol in front of there, and technically this solves the problem, right? Technically now, if like URL was equal to um, www.flashpointarchive.org, right? This is not a valid URL, but it's gonna get passed here. It's gonna throw an exception because it's not valid, and then it'll throw the protocol in front, so it'll have the HTTP in front, and then it'll be valid. This works. Um, the problem is that it produces some bad results if the URL is in, invalid for another reason, and we can't know what reason it was invalid for, right? So, for example, uh, let's say that our URL is, it does have the protocol in front, and then we have a question mark there. Now, this is actually invalid. Um, you are allowed to have a question mark on the end of a URL, and it usually doesn't do anything, but you need to have a slash there so that it becomes the query string. You're not allowed to have a question mark in the domain name. Um, and so this is an invalid URL. And so when this gets passed into the URI object, it's going to see that this is an invalid URL. It's going to throw an exception, and we're going to throw another HTTP in front of there. And so the URL that we end up with is going to be like this. It's going to have the other HTTP in front of there. And the funny thing, is, the, the bad assumption here is that because the URL wasn't valid before, it'll still be invalid. But the funny thing is that this is now actually a valid URL. Because, right, um, this HTTP colon slash slash is now the protocol. Um, this HTTP is interpreted as the domain name. This colon is interpreted as the beginning of a port number, but then there's no number, so it's just dropped. These slashes are interpreted as directories, and then www.flashpointarchive is interpreted as the uh, file name, the .org is the file extension, and this question mark is the query string, which is now valid in this position. So this is now a valid URL, it's just definitely not the URL that the user intended to enter. Really, this should error out and shouldn't let the um, user enter this uh, string. Uh, and so, so this is bad, right? Like this solution, it doesn't, it, it does solve the problem, but it doesn't really work in general because it'll create these nonsensical mangled URLs um, if you make a mistake somewhere else, right? So, so let's erase that. Okay, <clears throat> so I was actually kind of stumped on this problem, right? Because it's, it's kind of a chicken and egg problem. You can't validate the URL because you, can, you don't have a URL object that parses it out. So, so what do you do? I looked on Stack Overflow for like answers to this. I didn't really find anything satisfying. And so I decided uh, I'm just going to look at how a real browser does this. And you might think when I say that, oh, so I looked at like, the Chromium source or Firefox source or something, but I, I didn't do that. Uh, actually, what I did is I reversed uh, Internet Explorer. And you might think, why on earth would I do that instead of uh, looking at like an open source version? But the reason why is because if I looked at those open source projects, which are multi-platform, uh, I suspect that they're going to have their complete own implementation of it that I would have to recreate, and it might be actually kind of complicated. <clears throat> Whereas uh, with Internet Explorer, because it's Windows specific, I imagined that they probably use some uh, Win API call that does that just does this for them. Um, so what I did is I and and because of that, because they just use some Win API call, uh, I can p invoke that into my own application and then have a 
solution that shipped in a real browser just in my application with very little effort, right? So it's, that was sort of the the idea. <clears throat> and so I I looked. Um, I, I what I did is I just typed some nonsensical URL into Internet Explorer. I attached to it in a debugger. I set a memory. I I did a, a search for that nonsensical string I typed in that wouldn't be you know just in the binary anywhere. I set a memory breakpoint on that string so that if it was ever read, it would hit a breakpoint. And then I went back to the browser and just hit enter on the URL bar to see where it was used and where the protocol is added to it. <clears throat> and so I did find the function that I was looking for, and that function is this one, URL apply scheme. This is what the actual browser uses. And it's a bit of a strange um, function. <clears throat> uh, you actually call it twice. You can see I call it twice here. Um, so so I'll explain um, why I'm doing that. I'm also not quite using it uh, as it's typically intended. Um, so I'm going to explain a bit about, a bit about um, why uh, I don't quite use it in the intended way. So, <clears throat> so the first thing that we do is we just trim off any spaces um, on at the start of the URL, um, and then we create a string builder. And fun fact: uh, there's actually uh, an a max URL length uh, in Internet Explorer, uh, and that is it's quite long. Yeah, it's um. 2048 characters plus um, length of the colon slash slash and then the um, length of max length of the scheme which is 32 so actually you know pretty long uh, of a of a uh, function where was I again I was here right um, pretty pretty long of a string I mean um, that you can do here <clears throat> and so you know I create a string builder for that and this is just kind of boilerplate so that I can call this function. And the first thing that we do is we call this with this flag, which is URL apply guest scheme. Now this actually <coughs> usually fails. It usually uh, doesn't succeed. Um, but what it is intended to do is say that you pass in a URL like fdp gnu.org. So this is actually going to look at the subdomain at the start of the URL, and based on that, try and guess what the proper protocol is for this. So in this case, it would guess that it would be FTP colon slash slash. Um, <clears throat> and there's actually there's there's actually a few of these. There's a list in the registry uh, that defines these, um, but Usually the subdomain does not, uh, you know, very specifically give away what the uh, protocol should be. So this is convenient when uh, it does work, but it usually fails. Uh, so moving on to the, the real solution here. <coughs> so we call URL apply scheme with URL apply default. And what this is going to do <coughs> is it's going to try and determine if the URL has uh, a, a protocol or a scheme uh, in front of it already, and if it doesn't, then it will apply um, HTTP, or well, more correctly, it will apply the default scheme. And this is where I sort of deviate from what was intended of this function. So you'll notice I'm not actually using um, the validated result at all. Um, what I'm actually doing is I'm just checking uh, if this returns s false, which means that there was already a protocol in front of the URL. Um, so if there's already a protocol in front of it, I just return the URL. Otherwise, I stick um, the HTTP scheme in front myself. Uh, the reason why I did that is because the default is not necessarily guaranteed to be HTTP. It's actually defined in the registry, um, and I was concerned that um, 
maybe on somebody's setup somewhere or in a future um, version of Windows, the default might be changed to HTTPS. And if <coughs> you don't know Flashpoint, right, it's actually just running as a server on the same machine that uh, that is being used to, to access it. So it's not actually, like configured to use HTTPS because um, it's sort of like an intranet. If we used HTTPS, it would try and go to the site on, on the live web, which we don't want. We want it to go through our little proxy. Uh, and so it's actually very important that it doesn't use HTTPS for this. Um, that's why I decided to check, you know, I, I basically just use this function to determine, is there a protocol in front or not? Because if there, um, if there isn't uh, one, then it will add one, so I can know that there is or isn't, right? <clears throat> so I basically just use this as that, so I don't have to implement the check myself. Uh, but then I add the the scheme in front on my own to ensure that it will always be HTTP. Um, the one uh, edge case that we have to uh, worry about here is if there is leading slashes on the URL because you can have a URL that that um, that looks sort of like this so we can have a URL that's like slash slash example dot com and usually the slash slash at the start of this um, will uh, it usually means use the same protocol as the page that we're currently on, but in the context of an address bar, that doesn't make very much sense. But it's still a valid URL, so we have to deal with it. So <clears throat> if there are any leading slashes, then we just strip that off first, and then we um, add our scheme in front instead. <clears throat> and so I, I discovered afterwards... Uh, after writing this, that there's actually a feature in C# -sharp to to do this uh, called URI Builder. So instead of calling this get validated URL function, what I could have done is I could have used the URI Builder, which looks like this. Um, and then it's like sort of the same thing except it's less strict about the URL. Uh, and so the URL you pass in, it'll do the same thing, where it will try and detect um, if there is a protocol on it, and if not, it'll throw one on there. Um, the, but the reason I'm not using this, now that I've already created this solution instead, is because the solution that I've created is more flexible than this. Right, because I can decide, you know, at some at some future point, uh, if I don't like the the URL guessing that it's doing, I can just remove that. Right, I can just take that out, and also, you know, I can force the scheme to be HTTP. Uh, I was I'm concerned with URI Builder in particular that you know at some future point again they might make HTTPS the default, um, and you know it's a complete black box compared to this, right? So I can't, like, detect that and fix it. Um, <clears throat> whereas with this, I can. Uh, and, yeah, the documentation for URI Builder leads me to believe that it is basically exactly this. Uh, it even has the same interesting edge case, which is that uh, if you use this for a URL like localhost port 80, uh, this will not have HTTP prepended in front of it because uh, it's ambiguous, right? There's no way to actually tell with the port number there that this is not the protocol. And in fact, if you try typing this into Internet Explorer, uh, it will not prepend it with HTTP. It, it won't know what to do. Um, because, yeah, like, if you think about it, it's not much different from another protocol like the telephone protocol. Right, which is just, um, you know, it's like this. There's no slashes after the uh, the colon here, and so it just, you know, is a thing. Uh, it's just text and then a colon and then numbers. And these, there's no way to tell these apart, 
right? Um, if you think about it, they're they're exactly the same. There's no way just looking at the string to tell the difference. Uh, you would have to do like a registry lookup to to check is localhost a protocol or not. Which, you know, I decided, uh, you know, I don't need to go that far. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, uh, there's actually a couple interesting edge cases with this. Another one is. Um, URL apply scheme will not consider uh, something a protocol unless there's at least two letters in the protocol name. And at first you think, why at least two letters? But then you realize right, that another uh, potential conflict is drive letters, right? Like C equals slash, or with a forward slash, I guess, because it's URL users slash Anthony, right? There's no way to tell this. Um, you know, strictly speaking, from a, a protocol. Um, so we just have to assume, uh, as URL apply scheme does, that if it's just a single character, uh, then it's a drive letter, and so it's a local path. Um, so, yeah, uh, there's actually quite a few <laughs> different types of paths that all use this sort of format. And there's no real way to tell between them, but for the sake of, of user convenience, Right, um, we have to at least try. So, um, yeah, it's actually uh, kind of an interesting uh, problem that's more difficult uh, than you would at first imagine it to be. <clears throat> I didn't actually get to talking about the, the web browser itself at all, uh, but I suppose I will talk about that in uh, a future video. So uh, I hope you stick around. I uh, hope you find this interesting. I mean, I imagine some people will find this dreadfully boring, but uh, then, you know, this video is not for you. But if you do find this interesting, uh, then I'll have some more parts coming. So uh, stick around. Uh, I'll see you in the next video.